Hey YouTube, how's it going? Today I have a small crotch piece of African sumac to turn. It has this cool dead branch on the outside that I want to try and keep in the final piece if I can. On the inside you can see some really nice crotch grain on the raw blank. I will try to turn as little of that away as possible so that it shows up in the inside bottom of the bowl. There's only a small amount of thickness in the log that displays that grain. You have to guess just right to get it to show up where you want it to. So you have to go slow and check frequently to succeed. Uh, a complicating factor here is that the wood is still very wet and the fancy grain tries to dry very unevenly. So if I get the turning right, it might still destroy itself while drying out after I'm done. I hope not. Here I'm starting out with my 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge. This is the geometry that I got from Kent Weekly at Turn and Wood Bowl. And I really enjoy this particular grind for almost the entire part of the bowl. It's only a couple of other things that I use and uh, I really become accustomed to this grind. <clears throat> As you can see there, I'm stopping pretty frequently. I want to keep track of the cracks and just barely try and get the bowl round. I'm not going to go for really tall sides or anything like that because it's a pretty tiny piece. And it looks like the cracks that were really bad on the outside are turning away pretty rapidly. So I think most of them will be gone by the time I'm done. So this biggest crack right here, I'm going to have to take the bottom down to get rid of that. That's just too big to uh, keep in the final piece. So I was going to make the bowl a little bit smaller, but uh, it'll be worth it to keep it together. I stopped here because I heard a snap, saw something fly off, and I was hoping I didn't lose the whole branch. But I lost a big chunk of it, and that was my fault because I was coming down from the top, trying to keep the bark on, and uh, that was just not the right move for this super dry hunk of wood. It just caught the grain and snapped that piece off. I wanted to go a little further here because there was a flat spot on one of the wings and I wanted to clean up the cuts on that dead branch so that it wasn't quite so jagged in the final piece. getting closer to the final dimension for the bowl and I'm getting some pretty clean cuts on that branch which makes me happy and it's revealing another little bark inclusion there with that branch and it shouldn't be too long before I'm ready to go with sanding.
The grain that's showing up where that dead branch comes out is absolutely amazing. A lot of different colors there and figure. And then the crotch figure is showing up pretty nicely still in the opposite end. So I'm really happy with uh, everything that's going on right here. I'm trying to get one final really light pass here to get as clean of a cut as I can all the way from the bottom to the top of the bowl and to get that branch nice and clean sheared off. And after this, I should be ready to go with sanding. And decided I needed a little bit of shear scraping to get rid of the last little bits of tool marks and get a super clean finish. And boy, does it, it cuts nicely into tiny shavings when you get the tool sharp and the angle right. I decided I could live with that small crack at the tenon and uh, I didn't think it was going to go any farther after the bowl dried out so I just left it because if I got rid of it I'd be carving away a lot more of that figure and possibly losing the limb. As you can see, the crotch figure is really popping with the finish on there. It's a lot of chatoyance in that, and it's going to be super pretty on the inside of the bowl as well. Usually if the bowl blank is not out of balance at this point, I'll rotate the headstock to do the hollowing. Since my lathe and bench is really long, I can't get around the end of it to maneuver the gouge in the way it needs to be. So this allows me to do things more comfortably. And if you're comfortable, you're safer. So unless I need the tailstock, this is what I do. What I need to do first is establish the thickness of the walls and really see how that branch is doing and it's cutting very nicely and uh, really clean even though that branch is super super dry so I'm optimistic that uh, I'll be able to save it. So far so good with the branch. What you can't see is around the back side is the way the curvature of the outside of the bowl kind of gets pretty tight around the bottom. And uh, I made a little bit of a miscalculation here as to how that was gonna affect that branch. So it looks good here, but I start to run into problems here in a minute.
You can see my bowl gouge kind of jumping quite a bit as I was trying to get the walls really thin and that's because the the wood was alternating between wood and air and then even the wood itself was the wet wood and that super tri branch so um, it was difficult to get a very clean cut uh, because of the inconsistency and in the forces on the gouge and here's the first sign that things might not all be happy with that dead branch when I was uh, shear scraping to smooth out the wings it caught on there and chipped a hunk off of the top of that so it's a little jagged but most of it's still there I found one piece but I didn't find both pieces that would have filled the notch so I decided to just leave it out I decided I'm done here with the main carving and the wall thicknesses turned out really nice and thin and even and that dead branch is hanging on it's a little bit floppy but uh, it's still stuck on there pretty good so I'm, I'm really happy right now I'm ready for sanding now you can see there's a little bit of torn or fuzzy grain in that lower right hand corner not too worried about it. It's pretty soft and uh, not deep, so it should sand out pretty nicely. This little bark inclusion next to the branch was a little bit weak and crumbly, so I did reinforce that with a little CA glue. And uh, I was starting to get a little more worried about the branch because it was bending pretty significantly. And uh, I was hoping it was going to survive the sanding. And here's where my miscalculation came in. You can see this tiny little part of the branch where it dips in and thickness a little bit right here. It's only about a millimeter thick there, even though the top of the branch is about a quarter of an inch. And uh, yeah, unfortunately during sanding, the edge of the sanding disc caught it and it snapped off. and. I didn't think it was worth trying to put it back on. It was just too thin. As I get the finish on here, you can really see that cropped green pop. There's a lot of chatoyants there. And then down where that branch broke off, there's a lot of darker colors. I think going with the uh, drier dead wood, but turned out really pretty and uh, super happy with the project even though I did lose that branch which I'm kind of bummed about. I used this half inch cleaner gouge from Carter and Son for this task of removing the tenon and the nub because the grind on it is a little bit of a short, sharper angle, almost like a spindle gouge and it allows me to get really tight in there with the little nub and uh, shear it off nice and clean without having a lot of tear out. Thank <laughs> you. 
I did do one final finishing step off camera. I used some abrasive paste and polishing paste from Yorkshire Grit and uh, brought the surface up to a really nice shine, which you'll see in the pictures at the end here in a second. This is kind of a bonus shot. I don't really need it to tell the rest of the story, but this is part of the dust collection story. If you see this dust coming off the bottom of the sanding disc, it's getting sucked right into my dust port, which is exactly what I wanted. But some of it is kind of following the disc upward and around. And I'm trying to figure out whether I want to modify things a little bit to catch that. Um, or if what I have will be good for most purposes, just not the sanding disc application. Stay tuned for that. That's going to do it for today's turning. Thanks for watching, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and smack that subscribe and like button, and uh, really helps the channel out. Appreciate it. Thank you.